Hello my dear friends, in this video I'm going to show you how to perform a double drexis in an intumescent cataract and subsequently perform phacoemulsification under topical anesthesia. This patient was a 45 year old lady who had an intumescent cataract and we decided to take up the surgery under topical anesthesia. The patient was tending to squeeze the eye a bit and was tending to look slightly laterally. The corneal pocket incisions were made in order to take a firm fixation of the eyeball. A sideboard incision is then made and 1% oculan or xylocaine is injected. A few cc's is injected into the anterior chamber followed by tripen blue. Give sufficient time for the stain to take up. Form the chamber with the viscoelastic before attempting the clear corneal incision. One of the biggest challenges in successfully performing phacoemulsification in an intermittent cataract is the ability to create a properly sized capsular excess. Because of the intralenticular pressure, there is a high risk of getting an Argentinian flag runoff of the tone capsular excess edge. So the anterior chamber is deepened with the viscoat, a combination of chondroitin sulfate and sodium hyaluronate. And within the mass of that, a little amount of methyl cellulose is also injected. This tends to get trapped within the viscoat, doesn't escape the eye and also tamponades the central portion of the lens. We're using a cystotome either to the main port or you can go through the side port even. But when you go to the main port, make sure that you do not separate the lips of the clear corneal incision too much. A small flap is raised, further viscoat is injected over this in order to tamponade the flap and the central part of the lens. Using a Utrata forceps, this flap is converted into a mini rexus of about 2 mm, which has got strong edges and is resistant to tear. The central part of the lens can be flattened with the use of a high viscosity or high molecular weight OVDs. The decompression of the lens is then carried out by just flushing out the liquefied cortex with a simple irrigation using a 27 gauge cannula. In this case, I'm also aspirating a little amount of liquefied or loose cortex with the help of a Simcoe cannula which is a 23 gauge Simcoe cannula. Now once we have aspirated sufficient amount of cortex then the intumescence no longer exists and the positive intralenticular pressure also ceases to exist. While trying to clear up the cortex make sure you press down the center of the lens in order to decompress the posterior compartment as well. Now once this is done the chamber nicely deepens out. I'm using a straight Varna scissors. It is better to use a curved Varna scissors so that you get a curved cut rather than a radial cut. However, I did not have a curved Varna scissors so I made a straight cut. However, because we have decompressed the bag, there is no risk that this will run off to the periphery. Then using a Utrata forceps, in this case I'm using an Inamura forceps, Gently grasp the edge and create the capsular rexus. You will find that there is no tendency at all for this rexus to run off to the periphery. And you can get a nice central and highly circular well centered capsular rexus. In this patient although the nucleus looks brownish, it is not a very hard cataract. And I was able to perform phaco emulsification using a power setting of just 40%. In a bevel down position, you get instant occlusion. Then you bury the tip. As you bury the tip, you rotate so that the bevel goes anteriorly. This is like a small screwdriver motion that you make as you drive the phaco probe into the nuclear substance. And once you've gone to the sufficient depth, because the lens is not really hard, but it's rather kind of chalky because of the young age of the patient, it's quite easy to create the lateral separation and the crack. Before attempting the lateral separation, make sure that the hold on the nucleus is good. 
it's imperative that you get a very good hold on the nucleus before attempting the crack. And this of course is ascertained by the depth and the distance to which the phaco probe is buried into the substance of the nucleus. As you can see, I am creating multiple small fragments, quite a few, like at least six multiple small fragments are created. I am creating the lateral separation and making sure that the crack has gone through and through. At this point, the nucleus has been completely fragmented and you can proceed with the fragment removal. The mobilization of the fragment is carried out using a vacuum setting of 300 to 350 millimeters of mercury. I am using the multiburst mode and a phaco power of just 40 percent. In the Venturi machine, the vacuum is able to draw out the fragments to the center and by giving small bursts of phaco emulsification, we are able to quite easily get rid of these fragments in a very predictable, safe and reliable fashion. I do not really change my settings for the last piece because the fluidics of the newer generation FACO machines are quite advanced and the chamber stability is immaculate. Now the entire nucleus disassembly has been completed and I am switching on to RetroGlow to remove the cortex. Although the cortex is loose in hypermature cataract and most of it has oozed out, there is some cortical strands that are stuck to the anterior capsule. So in these cases, I prefer to remove these anterior cortical strands. You see that I am polishing it. I am working with quite a high vacuum, but I am not inadvertently sucking the capsule because of the side to side movement. So a quick side to side movement prevents you from grabbing hold of the capsule while you remove the cortex. The posterior capsule is also polished from all the little lens epithelial cellular debris. The intraocular lens is then implanted directly into the capsular bag. So this was a hydrophobic acrylic lens that is being injected through a narrow cartridge and there was a lot of resistance during injection. So you have to be very careful to gently release the intraocular lens by giving gentle pressure with the plunger. So once the entire lens is released, you can tuck it into the capsular bag. So the completion of the case under topical anesthesia in a hypermature intumescent cataract is over. So this is the photo taken 30 minutes after the procedure. As soon as the list was over, I saw the patient with the OPD and this is a sit lamp photograph showing a clear cornea and almost clear anterior chamber with very little inflammation. There was a thickening of the posterior capsule that you could see. Well, this cannot be polished, posterior capsule thickening can occur in many patients with hypermature cataract. It does not affect the vision and if it tends to fall in the visual axis, it can be yagged at a later date. Thank you for your attention.